Hello there, I am Helen Sadler, your destiny helper, coming to you once again. I always want you to know how appreciative I am of those of you who are writing me, emailing me, leaving those wonderful comments on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much. We are part of a community that makes it work. And I love my community. They are powerful force in spite of everything that we've been through. I want you to make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just push that bell when you get off from listening to this or before you listen to it, push that bell. And every time I come on, you will be alerted. And I want you to know when we are on because as a community, we make a difference of people that we're around. And when people don't understand what we've been through, we know because of personal experience. So once again, thank you for joining me. I want to talk to you about something um, I didn't know as many of you has been writing me. I mean, this is a hot topic to many of you. You said, why does the narcissist provoke? They're always provoking me. And it's negative. I don't do anything and I get provoked. You know, the provoking narcissist looks for reactions. And the narcissist wants you to react. Because sometimes they measure what they've lost or what they've increased. Because sometimes the narcissist want to know, am I losing ground? So they'll know how to trauma bond you, devaluate you, discard you, bring you back in, love bomb you, whatever is necessary to keep you hooked. That's what they'll do. And sometimes the narcissist will provoke you to get a reaction out of you to see, do you still care? How much do you care? How much time are you willing to spend in that argument? How much time are you willing to react to something they do because the narcissist is very insecure, even though they are, hor they are horrific and they do terrible things, they still are like sometimes kids, you know, they, they, they're insecure. Many of them are very fearful. They get other people to do their work, even though they have this great copious amount of grandeur and everything is catered to them. The narcissists feel like they're the king or the queen of the world. And yet there's still vulnerabilities in them. There's still arenas where they are absolutely cowardice in a lot of ways and they are absolutely insecure. So they use you to help cater to these insecurities. And what the narcissist want to know, do you still love me? And they know what love is by the specimens that they've had. Not that they've experienced it because narcissists can experience love, but they can experience it through you. They can watch how you love. They can watch how you maneuver. They can watch how you move. And then they build a case. They build a whole library of reactions and a whole library of behaviors based on what they have learned from you. And you did not know that you were the trainer or the teacher of the narcissist because many emotions they don't feel. They don't feel empathy. They don't feel mercy. They don't feel love and caring where you are broken down and really care about someone. The narcissist is self-centered, self-indulgent, and everything they do is for them. And they want you involved doing things for them. Why does the narcissist provoke you? Because you are now being measured. You are being measured as how much you care so they can tally the next move. And so you're sitting in the house, the narcissist come home, you have dinner ready, you have the bath water ready, you got their clothes laid out, you got the bedroom made up just in case he wants to go to sleep. You have a tea by the chair just in case he want to relax in the chair and just lie back and 
watch TV. You do everything. You pre-think everything. You pre-plan everything. You want life easy for them. And he don't like the food. The food has too much something in it, or it's too cold, or you should have added this, or you should have cooked this, or you should have brought this with that. You know if you had a did this with that, it would have made this dinner better. Now, the other day, he liked everything. Everything you made, he wanted everything just the way it is. And he told you, baby, this food is so good. I love the way you did it. And so, you know, and it's amazing when you say, I wonder, do the narcissists taste? They taste food. They're human. They act like they're not, but they got all of the human uh, uh, feelings except love. Anything that deal with caring, which, you know, you question, well, why does... Oh, sorry, guys. So you ask, well, why doesn't the narcissist love? Why doesn't the narcissist care? Why doesn't the narcissist understand? When you spend time with them, you will see components like something is sometimes they seem psychologically off. Kathy, would you please? Sometimes the narcissist seems, I'm sorry for, for that. Sometimes the narcissists seem like they're off, you know, like they're off kilter, like their mind isn't working right. You know, the way they process things, the way they process things, it really, it, it hinders them. It hindered them from the graces of psychological understanding, psychological wholeness. And they do things that just don't make sense. They say things that just don't make sense. And they provoke you with those things. They provoke you in what you dress. They make you feel that something is wrong. You got a perfect outfit. Everything fit. And the narcissist will tell you it doesn't match. The pants are too tight. And the pants are loose. And if you cook something, the food is not good. And if you take care of the kids, they find fault in the kids. If you go to work, they feel like you abandoned me. You stayed at work too long. You knew that you shouldn't do overtime. And you're trying to tell them, I didn't do overtime. I worked my regular hours. And the narcissists argue with you. You don't work nine to five. I know you get off at 445. The narcissist has been knowing that you work nine to five for 20 years. But this day, they want to argue because they're trying to provoke. And anytime the narcissist go through a troubled time, they go after the specimen. They go after supply. They make sure your life is a living hell because they just went through hell. And a lot of times you can tabulate their day by how they come home. And they come home like nothing is right. And they, they tell you they don't like living in this house. They want to move. And a week ago, it was the perfect dream house. And then you start looking for houses and you go and say, well, maybe we can move here. And the narcissist said, are you crazy? I bought this house and I spent all of this money. You just said, he said, you know what? You're always accusing me. You're always saying I say stuff that I didn't say. You say, you just told me. He said, you know what? You have a problem with yourself and you always blaming me. I love this house. That's why I'm paying for it. That's why you here. That's why I'm paying for these children and you to live here because I love the house. Then you stop arguing. Then the narcissist come with a, did you hear what I said? That I love the house. Why did you do this? Why did you say this? I looked it up because last week you said you didn't like the house. He said, you never heard me say that. I never said that. And you say, yeah, you did say that. And then you start writing things down. You start taping things. And now the narcissist say, oh, now you're of invasion of privacy. Now you're taping me. And like, I don't have my mind. You said, no, I just want you to remember what you said. And the narcissist said, see, I can't trust you. I can't trust you to do anything. I know you taping me. You probably got the house bug. When the narcissist say that you got the house bug, the narcissist is telling off on themselves, the house is bugged. But he blames you for bugging the house. And you don't think to go to the house because he just told you it's bugged. He said, you're bugging my phone. Your phone is bugged. Because a lot of times the narcissists make casual statements of what they're doing and they tell off on themselves. All of this is to provoke you, to provoke you even if it's just anger. And you get angry because you are constantly dealing with this and you don't know why the narcissist is doing it. Then they 
word salad you. you did, word salad means you're never going to make a conclusion or reach a conclusion to this argument. This argument could go for days. And just when you think you're going to get resolved, he starts all over again because he's provoking you. He needs a reaction from you because you are being trained to attach the trauma and to bond. And so he's trauma bonding you. And then and he's confusing you because if someone really loved me, what they do with the narcissist is doing and the narcissist do things that will provoke you. Then he comes out like he really love you. Then he comes out and he's really angry. And then he comes out and says, who's been in the drawer? You're like, what drawer? Who's been in my drawer? I had things right here and they are not right there. Well, when you looked in the drawer, the same three socks and the same this was in there. And then he, you open the drawer, they're still there. You said, what's missing? He said, I got a lot missing. You said, these are the same three socks. And so what you've done, you start taking pictures of things so you can remind the narcissist, this is the way it was. Nothing is missing. Then the narcissist get angry and said, now you're taking pictures of my thing. Now you say, I don't know what's in my drawer. Oh, now you accuse me of lying. Okay, since I'm lying. He said, then what are you doing? Because I remember what I put in there. This is called gaslighting. Gaslighting is when the narcissist wants you to feel like you are totally a lunatic, like something is wrong with you. You don't recall memory. You making up things. You're living in an alternate reality. Everything that is happening with them, the narcissist said out of their mouth. If they accuse you of cheating nine times out of 10, the, they are cheating. And so if you go to the store, the narcissist is clocking you to the store and they accuse you of meeting someone. You took a long time to shop and I know you didn't go shopping. I know you met someone and you are cheating behind my back. That's not you. You are totally loyal. You are totally faithful. You are giving everything that you can and the narcissist is coming up with all of these reckless statements, all of these reckless ideas, all of these reckless accusation to the point they are wearing you down and they're wearing you down because you really care so the narcissist is provoking you he wants to start an argument he needs an argument because he needs for you to be thrown off sometime when you are getting tired of the narcissist and you are saying that i've had enough i need to shift i need to change i need to leave for a minute i need to go and spend the night at mom's house because i'm tired of this i can't have this and then you know what the narcissist to do. The narcissist shifts. He blames you for everything and tells how much you don't care for him, how much you don't love him, how much you don't spend time with him. And then once you yield, you break because you really want the narcissist to know that I care for you. I'm doing everything I can, but nothing I do works for you. And so the narcissist now start the love bombing stay. He done switch from accusation. He done switch to you don't care. He done switch to anger. Now he switched to love bombing you. And so you don't know what to do. This throws you into total confusion because you done had four or five different mindsets, four or five different emotions at one time. And every last one of them was negative. And the narcissist, the narcissist would even use the children. They would go and love on the children and play with the children just to agitate you. And just when you think they're a bad person, the mask fell off. You see them for what they are. Now they are with the kids. They feed the kids. They bathe the kids. And then they start cleaning up the house and they start cooking. And you start thinking, wow, maybe, maybe they're not so bad. Maybe I'm just being too hard. Maybe I'm just not understanding. And then the next thing you know, the very next day, the narcissist is back at it again, provoking you again, accusing you again, gaslighting you again, calling you a lie again, saying that you don't love them. And so now you are working harder. You are now the hamster. You're running on the hamster track faster. You're picking up momentum. You are doing more because you don't want the narcissist to think that nobody cares for them. And the narcissist don't even care for themselves. The narcissist is constantly provoking you. And if he don't provoke you, he'll get a friend. He'll get a flying monkey friend. And this flying monkey will say, are y'all okay? And you'll say, yeah, we're okay. Because I noticed this or, or Kevin said this. 
And you'll be like, that's not happening. That's not happening here. And then that person will say, well, you need to be careful because if you're in denial, you cannot heal. And the truth of it is nothing is happening there. The narcissist is using their flying monkey. The narcissist feel like they're losing control. They got to bring you back into control and bring you back under the control of the hands of the narcissist. So it's accusational all the way. And you still in love. You still want to please them. So you come out of the confidence level you have and you start tracking them you start catering to them you start loving them and the more you cater the more it's required they never get enough it's like an empty bottomless pit the more you do the more they need for you to do until you start questioning yourself now the narcissist know I got headway. I done made a full blast of what I want to do. And now I got them questioning themselves. They're acting with great delirium and they act like they don't know what they're doing. And the narcissist come with everything together. And I mean, they just, they just, they just the best in the world look like. And I mean, they're helping around the house. They're cooking dinner and those that can cook or they take you out to dinner. They're catering to the children. And so now you're totally confused because this behavior was not the behavior that was a week ago. They were nowhere near this. They didn't want to talk. They didn't want to do anything. They were angry. It's all your fault. I should have came home. The food should have been ready. The food wasn't ready. And now they're just going, 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 and they'll continue to go. When you know you can pick up that he wants to leave, he wants to ghost, he wants to discard, but he don't know how to do it, so he's provoking the argument, and the next thing you know, the wrong thing is said, he said, I'm done, I'm finished. He leave, and you don't see him in three or four days. Then he come back and say, you know, I miss you, honey. I recognize it possibly I could have been wrong. No, he's triangulated. He's been with the, the, the new specimen and he needs a new specimen to cave in and it's not quite ready yet so he's still there still tolerate and you got to remember the new the new supply is different than the old supply who's a main supply nothing is like the main supply the main supply get tormented more but the main supply get the narcissists to come home the narcissists some of them don't even think about leaving and when they do it's way down the line you know when the narcissist said I done been here long enough I want something younger I want something better and then they don't do a final discard. They keep it until something else can come up and they hoover you back. And the narcissist does this over and over and over and over and over and over again. Expect that hoover. And when the provoking narcissist provoke you to say things, provoke you to tears, provoke you to fight for the relationship, you're already fighting for the relationship. And then the first thing that somebody say something to the narcissist, he's off. I mean, he's mad. When the narcissist leave, he wanted to leave. You didn't do anything to provoke him. You didn't do anything. He said he stayed at his friend's house. He was not at his friend's house. He was out triangulating because the narcissist, when you are main supply, a lot of times they look for a replacement. They're looking for someone to become the main supply, but it takes so much to do to become the main supply. The main supply get all of all of the outbursts. The main supply get all of the anger. The main supply gets everything. And when he comes to himself, where he halfway want to act different, uh, decent, he leaves. He leaves you and he goes out and does whatever he want to do. And he bring all of that back home. He traffic all of that back home. And if it happened to be a bacterial infection or if it's a disease, you get accused of stepping out when you never ever stepped out. The provoking narcissist will provoke you on every hand. You get accused of everything. The provoking narcissist is good at it. And he is a trigger. And he would trigger uh, arguments. He would trigger dissensions. He would trigger your left, low self-esteem, your confidence. And next to you, you are so 
uh, a low esteemed until you don't know whether you're going or coming. And sometime in these cases, some of you say, I feel like I'm losing my mind. I'm losing my thoughts. I'm losing my presence. I'm losing my position. I don't have the energy to exercise. I don't have the energy to fight back. I don't have the energy to argue. I don't have the energy to do anything. I just want to leave, but you can't just leave, especially if you have children, because that is the narcissist's children. And you know, you can go and look at the video about a parent alienation, and you can see how they operate, but they want you to doubt. They want you not to discover. They want you to be provoked. They want you in anger. They want you in fear. They want you in doubt, because all of this cause doubt and you start questioning who you are, who you are. You start questioning everything. And that's what the narcissist want. So the provoking narcissist provoke you to everything that they can't have. They provoke you to everything that they want to be. They provoke you to everything that they know is rightfully yours, but because the narcissist is so jealous, very jealous, the narcissist feel like you don't deserve it. It's all his. Watch how the narcissist maneuver when he wants, when he has a business and the business is doing good and the narcissist want to leave, he starts an argument and blame you for every bad thing that the business is is you are up for grabs with the narcissist. That's why it's good to have a nice um, uh, uh, round of finances in case there, there's differences. Sometimes the narcissist is malignant and they provoke. And so never stay in an abusive situation. Always have a way out. When the narcissist is malignant, sociopath, psychopath, when the narcissist is foul, you know, he sees you as a punching bag. Don't stay there. Don't negotiate there. When the narcissist start to physically violate, there's things you have to do. There's discretion that you can have. There's uh, companies or groups that help you, that help women who are in narcissistic relationship with their children. You can get out and you can move forward. The narcissist provoking you, yeah, he will. He provokes you for nothing. No, you don't have to do anything. All you have to do is be in the vicinity when this happened. And the narcissist wants you in the vicinity because if things don't work out, you are Hoover. That's it. And some of you are biting your teeth, gritting your teeth, saying, I don't want to see him again. I don't want to see him again. I want out. I did a video when the supply has had enough. I want you to listen to that video because that video could bless you. I really hope I've answered your questions. What happens when with a provoking narcissist, everything happens. But you have to protect yourself or you have to be wise in how you handle the narcissist. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's always a pleasure to make this video. Write me at destinyhepper12s at gmail.com. Uh, destinyhepper12s at gmail.com. I am so elated about the time that we spent together. I look forward to the new Empath Conference that we're going to have at the end of March or uh, the end of February or the beginning of March. It's such an awesome, awesome, awesome opportunity. And I want you to join the Empath conference. It will be at the end of February or the beginning of March. So write me, Apostle uh, uh, Destiny Hepper 12 at gmail.com. I would love to talk to you and I pray that this video bless you. I am Helen Sadler, your Destiny Hepper.